Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video on the FreeCAD Draft Mirror Tool. The FreeCAD Draft Mirror Tool can be difficult to understand at first, but once you understand um, two things, it'll become easier to use. The first is that it's designed to be used with the viewport in mind. So the viewing plane is used in the calculation as to where to place the mirror plane. And you'll understand that a little bit more later. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that the draft tool is sort of a, two, a 2D tool or a 2.5D tool. So it allows you to manip manipulate in two dimensions, 2D objects or 3D objects as, as, um, as are presented here. So let's get started by creating a new document and doing some mirroring. So as I'm creating a new document, I do want to tell you I finally figured out the draft workbench mirror tool by reading a forum post, which I cannot find again. If I do, I will put it in the descriptions. Um, but the, it's, the key was is the viewport viewing plane or the viewing plane is, is very important um, in creating the mirror. So let's go into draft. And so you see I have a cube here and I'm going to do it wrong now because um, you know, I want, I want you to see it wrong first and then we'll, then we'll do it right. So basically I'm, I'm viewing an orthographic view and my work plane is, uh, I think from top. Yeah, it's currently in the top. So normally I would expect, um, draft to honor the working plane, even if, or maybe if you have it snapped to it, it might even as well, but let's do a mirror. I'm going to select the cube. I'm going to select mirror and I'm going to select the mirror and it's, you notice how it doesn't say, cause it's confusing as to whether it's the axis or the plane and you're defining the plane but you're only defining it with two points. So you see, okay, well that looked like it created a mirror, but did it? Should the mirror have been uh, directly behind this or, or is it diagonal? And that's where the viewport plane comes in. FreeCAD uses the viewport plane to determine the third axis of the uh, mirror. So if I double click this mirror, you'll see the, the, the editing tool for the mirror plane you say, wait, there is no mirror. That's because it's perpendicular to the viewport plane. And that's what we got to remember, perpendicular to the viewport plane. And if you rotate a little bit, then you see the mirror plane. And then it, then it starts to become obvious. So it mirrored it through, you know, with the mirror plane. So that makes sense. But if you don't know that piece of information, it could be confusing. I'm going to click on finish editing to get rid of that edit tool. And let's do another one. I'm going to keep it on the same view. And let's see if I can get one to fail. Uh, I think if I do this bottom corner, this corner maybe, uh, I don't know. Let's just pick one. So I'm going to pick this corner here. I don't think this one will fail either. I think this one will look, look like it worked. Um, but again, should it have mirrored in this, in this space here or diagonally here, which is more intuitive. I don't know. So now let's do it wrong. So I'm going to hide these two mirrors and I'm going to rotate it a little bit. So our view is different. And now let's do a mirror and I'm going to select the same edge as before. And you'll notice it's a completely different mirror. Actually, it was even more different than I was expecting. Let's see if I can get what I was expecting. So what I was expecting is, is, is it to mirror on the same edge? Yeah, I was, I was expecting that. I don't know what I misclicked. So ignore this one. And so now let's look at the mirror plane again. And you'll see again, the mirror plane is perpendicular to the viewport plane or the viewing plane. I'm not sure exactly the term. And if we rotate a little bit, it becomes obvious. So the, 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 the trick to doing this uh, well, let me click finish editing. I'm going to get rid of these, all three of these, or, or not necessarily well, but being able to do it in a way that's not super confusing, um, is to always orient your viewport plane and your working plane uh, to the same port. So I'm going to set to, or to the same um, vector. So there's my viewport pane, pane set to top, and I'm already on top here. So you can either choose one of these, or if you're at an odd viewport, if your viewport's skewed funny, you can just collect, select view there. So now let's do a couple of rectangles um, to show you uh, more uh, proper or, or more intuitive mirroring. So I'm gonna draw a couple of rectangles that I'll plan on mirroring and get them out of the way. So let's do one there. Let's do one out here. And uh, that's, that's good. So let's uh, select a rectangle and then we're going to select a mirror. So I'm going to select the X and the Y points. 
and that'll define the plane with the z, direct, z vector being towards you. And you'll see it created a rectangle as expected. You'll see there's no angling there. So now let's do that uh, same thing with this rectangle and let's do a diagonal mirror. So again, make sure you keep your viewport aligned. See, I rotate a little bit, so now I gotta click on top again to get it back aligned with that. It might be uh, cool to, to have something that says, keep the working plane aligned with the view. There is, there is auto, um, but I have not had really good luck with auto, so, let's, so you can do auto, um, but that added confusion for me. Now, maybe I'll understand it later and do another video when I understand it. So let's get everything top and top. And so let's do another mirror. So I'm gonna mirror this diagonally. So I'm just gonna create a line. The line can be of arbitrary length. The length of it doesn't matter. So wherever you get your good snap point. So that did a mirror as I expected on the diagonal and it stayed in the same plane and everything. And we're good to go. So let me get back to top and let's do one more. So this is gonna be a mirror at a distance. So I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna select mirror. And then, so I wanna mirror it through this point. So I'm gonna draw a line from here to here. And again, that line is an arbitrary distance. Okay, so that's that's mirroring um, in the same plane. Let's try to do a mirror like a, a forty or a ninety degree mirror. So to do a ninety degree mirror, what I what I simply want to do is change my viewport and working plane. I'm going to leave these in in the same plane. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do front, and I think this is front and front. So now I have my grid and my grid my working plane to use for snaps and my view is in the direction I want the mirror plane to be perpendicular to. So I'm just gonna select this object here, and I think that's that one in there, yep. And I'm gonna select mirror, and I'm gonna draw a 45 degree line using the grid snap tool, which is selected above. And you see that I've gotten my 40, I've got my 45 degree mirror down there. Now, I was actually expecting it to go, well, I was, I was expecting it to go up here, but that would mean, let's see, yeah, so I would have to draw it this way. Let's try that again. So you do have to do some spatial, you know, spatial thinking in your head to get to get it right. So now you see, now you see, I have a mirror here and a mirror here. Now you could also do this just by cloning this object and rotating it, um, and that might be easier. I don't know, but you wouldn't be, you might not be able to do that for uh, in, in other circumstances. So it's always good to know all the tools. So let's get um. So to mirror a box. Uh, well, I, th I think, yeah, let's just get on to doing the text mirror, how I did that text mirror effect thing. So to create our mirror text effect, we're gonna uh, open a new document, do that here. And one of the things I've noticed is my draft grid hides a lot. I can't get it to come back, oh, there it came back. And I can't always come back, so I just click until I get it back. <laughs> or maybe I switch the workbench, because I figure that kind of triggers a reload. Um, but it's a little finicky. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to set to the top view and I'm gonna keep my working plane in top and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. We're gonna work with giant text. So actually, no, I'm gonna do a front view. Let's do front and let's set this to front as well. And let's do my shape. So we're gonna use a shape string. I'm gonna put it here and let's do mirrored text. And now my height is, my height entry doesn't work for some reason. So after I enter through all those, I have to change my height. I don't know why it's not working, uh, or you know, it's it's set to something too small for my current units. So that's the text I want to mirror. And um, so basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to view this from the side because I want to mirror it 90 degrees towards the back. So let's view it from the right side and you see there's my text. And so I want to make sure I do it in this direction. So let's try that again. And, but I want, so now I want to, so now that my view is set, I want to set my working plane to the view and I'm gonna select my text and you only need to select a, a segment. The whole thing is actually selected. I'm gonna select my mirror tool and do a diagonal, a 45 degree line. So the mirror ends up being 90 degrees and you see there's my mirror there. And that's, that's how you do mirror tech, that little effect. Now I also scaled it, which, um, the first time I tried it, it didn't work with, uh, it didn't scale correctly with the mirror shape string. And I'll show you why. Uh, let me set this to 
back to top. So I have the, and that's so I have the grid to reference for snapping. And let's try to do a scale. So hopefully this will scale. So I select the base point to start the scale. And then I, I'm just going to do it in Z. And you see how it's create a clone is selected here. I think you need that to scale, um, to scale a shape string. Yeah, so I think it didn't scale. Yeah, so uh, last time I did it, it scaled. This time it didn't. So let's try it again. Let's try, uh, oh, it's because I, I think I picked the wrong, yeah. So I scaled it in Z and it's got no Z height. So I scaled it in in the correct direction this time, Y. So it's global, uh, global coordinates for scaling, not local. Um, I wanted to squeeze the top of this, but I haven't figured out a good way to do that yet. So that kind of creates a nice shadow effect. Uh, now I know you'd probably rather do that in Blender, but hey, it's fun to do these things in, in FreeCAD too. Now, the other thing I, I wanted to show you was if for some reason you needed to do more to it, you can take this mirror and do a draft downgrade and it becomes what's called a shell. So the shell you can do more too, because it's actually, or you could even downgrade it further. So I get all the individual faces, and if you don't, and if you don't need the individual faces, you can upgrade it back into a shell. Now you can't upgrade it back into a shape string. So at this point, it's detached from this text. Whereas, let's see if I can undo back to where I was. Whereas with the clone, it's still attached, uh, attached to the text. So with the clone, I can change the text. Let's say uh, mirrored clone. Sort of a redundancy and you see that my my clone text has changed so that that's a valuable uh a valuable linkage to have um so that you can use this more dynamically well i hope this uh you like this video and if you do make sure you subscribe and you need to click the alarm bell if you want to get notified and if you want me to get more viewers and subscribers make sure you share this so have a great day and i'll see you on the next